I'm continuing my series on slavery. And to truly tell the history of slavery, I need to advance forward 100 years right quick, okay? From the 1850s to the 1950s, because this is very important. You see that name right there? This is my elementary school. It's called McDonough 19, right? McDonough 19, okay? What you need to understand about this school building is that name right there, McDonough. Remember yesterday when I took you to the breeding pens in New Orleans? I said, we need to go to the breeding pens and show you how we were bred. I said, the name of that is called McDonoughville. What, this is the same guy from the breeding pens. He was a very vicious slave owner named John McDonough. I went to John McDonough 19 elementary. That's my first grade classroom. Right there. Right there. I'm going to back up. My first grade class. Right there. See right there? That's my first grade class. Got suspended for calling a teacher a bitch and had to go to another school. True story. The other school is down the street. It's called Thomas Alva Edison. And yes, I called the white teacher a bitch. <laughs> but anyway, I digress. We had white teachers in this school who could not um, leave with white flight. I got to tell you this story and then I'll resume slavery. Because what you're looking at here, this school, right, this land was donated by a slave owner for white children, not African American children. Now remember, I told you, I went to this school. The school was donated, right, through a land grant by the, the estate of John McDonough. So all of this money he made from slaves, like Rockefeller, once he got to a certain age, he wanted to start doing some, some good. So he created a trust fund in which they donated land and property for schools. These schools were not for African-Americans. Even though I grew up in this neighborhood, this was a white neighborhood. And I write about it, brother. Yes, sir. Well, how you doing? How you bro? doing, man? I'm shooting a documentary on this. Come on, see how see how uh, any random brother from New bro. Orleans could tell you this story. Please go from here, bro. Take us. I'm taking these students into the experience of desegregation. Yes. As it relates to McDonald 19 and the fight that went on here, please share. Well, it was hard, even though I was a child. I mean, way before I even was born. But I'm finna mm. really. Man, this is my aunt right here. Let the wrist This is my aunt. And she's doing very well right now today. Wow. This is my aunt, man. Wow. God is good. Wow. And, and, just, and just last week, we was at a store right here. And, and she came in there. We was talking. A lot of people were talking to her. The owners of the store right here. And, man, she, I heard some stories about, you know, when I was a baby, I'm 53 years old. 52? And, yeah, you're right, big brother. And 52? It just was. But you know what? I may, this may sound, you know, but I always ask myself, our people. All reasons why we suffered, mm -hmm. you know, so much, man. I mean, that's why I say God must have something in store for us. You know, we good people, we loving people, we we godly people. I just don't never understood. I actually, what was it? What was it like in the night? Well, your experience, my experience in the educational system, because me and you're the same age. I'm fifty, you're fifty-two. Yes. We was we was coming in elementary the same age. Right. You grew up back in town or on this side? On this side. All right, so. You hit this area when white flight was happening. When the white people leaving out, they was leaving out. We're moving in. We was moving in. Share much. what that was like for you. It was like where well, I was like, what? Well, let me see. When we was on Lamash, right here, two blocks. We was living on Lamash, and I was like, so we couldn't ride the buses with the school buses. We walked to school, you know, all this thing, and it was all black. It was still segregated, mm -hmm. you know. Even when right. I was a child, right. you know, you about seen that, and you know, me being young, you know, I been, but I know something was wrong. But man, all this was predominantly white. All of it was all, white. Uh, not just here, even on the other side of the bridge. Like I said, a lot of people know the housing projects, uh -huh. the Iowa Fields history. That was all white all at white. one time. And out there, man, just they put all us black people, black people there. But you know what? 
it's happening again right now. All the whites coming back. They're taking, They're taking over, over again. all the property. I'm driving they down. I saw white people at the false stall bus yes. stop, and I had to slow down. I said, "You seen it? Wait, wait, what's happening? They buying everything. Oh, see Saint Cloud? It's dominant white owned. How now. black was this in the '80s? Oh man, it was right. It was real. It was, but see, back of town, where I was, no I was born. I was born on Tupelo and Law. Oh, okay, okay, Tupelo and Law. You I was know, born on Tupelo and Law. It was a lot of blacks. Mm -hmm. It was like Harlem. Exactly, just like Harlem. Like Harlem. But I don't understand why it could come take over and just take him. Man, Slowly but surely. We come a long way though, man. Brother, thank you. Thank, thank you. thank you for man. educating my students. God bless man. you here. God bless hey, you, bro. We I got told, students, right? Yeah, I told them I can grab any any random African American in this yes. area. Yes. Because they're all the intellectuals. They could tell this story. Oh yes, man. Thank you. Thank you. God bless. What's your hey, first name, bro? Corey, man. Corey, last Corey. name? Barnes. Corey Barnes. Corey Barnes. And hey, guess what, brother? Right now, me and a co-worker of mine, and yeah. a couple of brothers, we got a meet next Saturday. We're trying to grab the youth, man. Uh -huh. You know, we're trying to do something to teach them trades. But see, we're in construction. We're doing a lot of remodeling. And all this killing and stuff, man, it, it's just, they need love, man, and guidance. And that's what I'm trying to be a part of. To my young brothers, man, they in these streets, man, because they don't have nothing. They don't have gyms. They don't have no recreation. Not constructed for them to do. But they're just in the streets with the guns and stuff because they don't have no lead and guidance. They, they're willing to listen. We see it every day. I want a job, I want a brother, but, but they're out in the streets and got people. But that's what we're really trying to do, man. Brother, I want to Grab thank you. Grab our youth, man, because they're dying young, man. Brother, thank you. Thank you, thank man. You. God bless. Wow, that just happened. <laughs> that brother. Wow, that just happened. This is his aunt. <laughs> All right, let me get back to the story. That's just happened, guys. I'm, I do these videos live. Y'all know how I do it. But Josh, per this was donated by John McDonald, right? And these videos are, I told you about the breeding pens. I told you about the, the, the schools. Well, this is number 19. This is John McDonald 19. And there were, there were a lot of these schools all over the New Orleans, all over New Orleans, right? They all had numbers. I think it went all the way up to in the 50s, right? If I'm not mistaken. But when you see the story of the desegregation of the schools, right? And the first child, right? She's still alive. She's still with us. He just told you, she's, she's still with us. This is that scene right here, right? This is the one in front of John McDonough. Now, this is John, this is McDonough 19, right? This is that view. Those are those stairs right there. And this street right here is called St. Claude. But right there at the beginning of what's called um, St. Bernard Parish, right? Excuse me. Going, the, the parallel road is called Judge Perez. Judge Leander Perez was this vicious segregationist that led this protest, right? You see all these white Christians out here trying to stop this child from going to school. Look. Trying to stop this child from going to school. The reason why this was so vicious is because this property was donated for white children, right? It, it took these, the desegregations of the schools for us to have the ability to get into this building, right? So when I get here in the 70s, it's already segregated, but my mom, my mom was also caught up in this. My mom was supposed to be one of the girls in this group, right? She didn't get caught up in that wave. My mom got caught up in the second wave was, was John Mack, right? John Mack, high school my mom was bused to john mack high school so when people want to say that these things happened so long ago it wasn't that long ago my mom is still alive she, she's on facebook she with her computer savvy self she's on tiktok dancing this history is not that long ago but john mcdonough was one of the most vicious slave owners in the world
not just here in New Orleans, he was also a slave owner in Virginia, right? That's why his, his holdings, if you pull up John McDonough in Baltimore, you're gonna find schools named after him. And people say, well, why is there a John, why is there a McDonough High School in Baltimore, Maryland, and all over Virginia, and there's M McDonough High Schools and elementary schools here in New Orleans, because his trust donated property in both areas that were paid for from the money he made from slave breeding. He was a slave breeder, okay? So this video is, is going a little bit long because you cannot tell the story of slavery without dealing with John McDonough and McDonough 19 Elementary School, which is now a historical landmark. I'm going to get you a view from across the street. Now, currently, I'm standing in the exact same spot the segregationists stood to protest the desegregation of these schools, right? And this little girl... Ruby Briggs, but she is trying to get into, she's just trying to go to school. And they're all lined up out here, right? This was ground zero for Brown versus Board of Education for the desegregation of schools. It happened here in New Orleans, but you know what else New Orleans was ground zero for is Plessy versus Ferguson. What created segregation, what gave these white Christians the legal justification, the legal grounds, the legal precedent to treat us worse than animals, right? All of that happened right here, okay? Plessy versus Ferguson, that case, that, that's the most horrible Supreme Court justice case, right, is on the same street about eight blocks that way. And I'm gonna take you to the exact spot, but here, I'm still talking about slavery, even though we advanced 100 years. But this property right here was donated by John McDonald, right? In other words, what you're watching here is the wealth that was created off the back of enslaved Africans. He has 52 of these. Here in New Orleans, and I'm not sure how many in Baltimore, I need somebody from Baltimore, Virginia area to put that answer in the comments for us of, of John McDonald Trust in Virginia. Well, why, why was these two connected? Because New Orleans and Virginia were the major slave ports. That's why so many people genetically in New Orleans, so many Africans in New Orleans are related to people genetically in Virginia because of ships that docked in New Orleans went from New Orleans to Savannah from Savannah up sometimes stopping in Charleston but mainly they their in route was in Virginia if they started in Virginia the in route was in New Orleans so the same cargo ended up in both places and that cargo was driven by McDonough 19. But I wanted to share this story of the integration of schools. This is out of the timeline, but it's important that you, you see the wealth and the privilege that slavery created for their children. This is not a school. This was never a school intended for African-Americans, even though I went to it, even though that gentleman that walked up who shared with us that his aunt was involved in, in the desegregation of this even though we went to this school this school just like the school in little rock arkansas were for the whites they had a the 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 the, the head start that white people had on us they always want to judge us according to their standards when you realize you heard him say my aunt is alive and well she's still doing interviews it wasn't that long ago that we were treated like dogs and we're not allowed to go there. And this guy named John McDonough, this vicious slave owner, his name is still on the building. I want you to Google this right now. Your homework assignment is John McDonough. I want you to know who that guy is. 
and I'll continue this video in the next series. I'm going to pause so you can read this and I'll go on to the next video. And there's something else I want to say real quick before I go. When I, all of these schools in New Orleans used to do something called Founders Day, right? And and my mom hated Founders. She never let me attend Founders Day. That's when we all went to this statue of John McDonough and put flowers on it. You know, white folks used to make us do that shit. Like we had to go to this statue and lay flowers, right? Because a part of his trust, he said he just wanted to be remembered. Right, I'm donating all of this property and all of this land, right? For he also didn't donated the property for this one, right? This is where the case went down. He said, I'm donating all of this property and all of this land, and I just want you guys to remember me by coming to a monument of me and placing some flowers. What they never told the children at that monument is that he was a slave breeder. This is why we cannot allow white people to teach history to our children. If we allow them to do that, we will, they, we, all of us will grow up thinking that slavery was a picnic, thinking that this, this was a part-time job. Slavery, chattel slavery was hell. The Bible describes hell, right? But the people who wrote the Bible never visited hell. Africans, Africans, can tell you firsthand accounts. Great, great grandmothers can tell you firsthand accounts of what hell is because we have been in it. We've lived in it. And it wasn't no devil with the horns and the pitchforks. It was white Christians. That's the devil. And that's the hell that we survived.